my name is Mapato Namashang, but my friends call me Maji. I'm the program's coordinator of Women of Zimbabwe Arise Uwonsa. Can you tell us what you are working to change in Zimbabwe? There are a lot of challenges, but the greatest challenge is that we've been suppressed for a lot of time, and oppressed for a lot of time, that people have since become very quiet. So the change that I need to bring, that I feel is, is the real need that it has to take, is to transform the way the society thinks. They should not wait for the leaders to come with solutions. They are the ones who are feeling, facing these challenges, and they're facing the crisis, and they're bearing the brunt of suffering. So they should be the ones saying, the way forward is this. That's how I want to change the society. Can you tell us about what made you decide to, that this change was your responsibility? Part of the society that is, I, I, maybe I, I should explain like this, that I come from a region where we are marginalized and we've never re, uh, enjoyed the fruits of independence. That is material and sound. So I've noticed that uh, there is a lot going around. And if I get involved, people see me doing it, then they will say, okay, they'll join in. The most important thing for me is to not for people to wait for someone to do things for them. It's about them doing it. And it's very key that people like myself come from Matibel and they do it because we've been involved in a genocide where no one spoke. The internal community was silent and the people were, were more silent at home. Because now there was that fear if you speak, you will be killed and no one will come to your defense. So we're defending our own space and we're defending our own rights. What do you think is the most important thing that people need to know about your work? I think the most important thing that we need to be alive to as human beings, as citizens of Zimbabwe, is that despite of our background, despite of our tribe, where we come from, at the end of the day, we are Zimbabweans, we should create Zimbabwe. We should strive, all strive to respect all human rights and respect each other. The principle of universality and non-violence should always be in our minds. We should not say when it's someone who has done bad, when they are violated, we ignore them. It's still a human rights violation. We shouldn't learn that. Maji, can you tell us about the greatest obstacles to achieving your goals with WOZA and how you work to overcome those obstacles? I think the greatest obstacle is that we face is that we are women and we are in Africa and in a practical society where women cannot be heard. And moreover, we are in Zimbabwe where there is no rule of law, where the government does not respect any laws. We, yes, we have infrastructure with the judicial, but those are also oppressed, they are not independent. So these are some of the challenges that we face, but we are able to overcome these challenges because we are, able, we are common to women. We, to, we, we have a, a thing that we, if you tell a woman, you, you have told everyone. So we communicate through that and then we, 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 our issues and what we yearn for become larger than the obstacles. Hence, we are able to work and expand and still continue living in Zimbabwe despite the operations that are there. And how do you feel like you'll know when you have succeeded in your work? I think I will know when what we are fighting for, the social justice and democracy that we speak for, speak to, that is they in the communities, is they in my house, is they in the schools, everyone can see it, everyone can speak freely without intimidation. And it's very unfortunate that even in the, in the human rights organization, where we say we purport to be fighting for human rights, at times human rights get violated. So I will be happy when people are able to speak out, without, despite the consequences, saying, I believe in this, I will speak out on this. Can you talk a little bit about how your association with the Robert F. Kennedy Center has helped you achieve your goals with WOZA? I think it has really improved me personally as an as a, a individual because I think since becoming an a, a RFK laureate, I now have a laptop. I know it's, it's for you guys maybe something that is not a big thing. For me, it's a big thing. Now I have my own emails I can communicate. And it also it opens the other avenues that I, I know I have solidarity with RFK. I can share ideas. I can do a lot of things. The advocacy is very key for, for me. I know that now when Waza is in trouble, someone is going to, to speak on behalf of us. That is very key. And also the, the, the coming up, with, mixing with other lawyers, seeing the... Because at times when you're in your own space, in your environment, you think, oh, this is tough. But when you see other people, with the, the, their envir operational environment, the way there's military, but they're still continue working, you say, okay, mine is better. So I think it has been very helpful to compare the working environment and also to share ideas and also the, the strength and the spirit that we are not alone. How did you become an advocate for social justice and human rights? I think the background where I come from, when, since as a kid coming from a and where there is lack of development, I said, no, 
like Zimbabwe, you know, Zimbabwe is one thing about Zimbabwe is so rich with resources, but they're just being manipulated by a few individuals. So that's what got me involved. I, everyone, I, I believe that all human beings are equal and we have the same rights. We should share whatever economy is there in the country equally. And what about those people who say that one individual can't make a difference? What would you say to somebody who says that? One individual can make a difference. I believe that. You start with one person, and then other people join in. I, I think in my table land, like, oh, unfortunately I will keep giving the, 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 the issue of my table land will come into play. Because before Waza was formed, no one could dare speak out in Zimbabwe. But now we're seeing, but it started with a few people, one person saying, we are forming Waza, I'm joining Waza. And I remember even my family, they were very scared for me when I joined. They said, oh, oh you are going to be killed like your uncle. I, unfortunately, I have an uncle that was killed by, by Gugura because he was very vocal, speaking out. They, they were very worried about that. But seeing me coming out of prison, doing these things, people are brave enough to do So one individual can change the world. How can people help you make a difference? I think people can help by making a difference by looking at which role can I play as an individual. Yes, it's not everyone who is prepared to risk to go to prison. But there are some people, he can still play a role saying, okay, this, by speaking out saying this is wrong. It's very important for, for some people to acknowledge that there's something that is not, rather than sitting at your home, keeping quiet and saying, okay, it's happening to someone else, it's not happening to me, it's not good enough. We need to, people who can speak out. We need to share responsibility. When I'm in prison, I need someone to look after my doctor. I was just four years at home saying, okay, don't worry, mom is coming. That, for me, is very important. What do you think that the United States government can do to help support your work? To quote to one of um, Robert Kennedy's, I'm, I'm not sure, if, I'm sure, if, but if that they have stuck with me. There are a lot of quotes that he has said, that he, uh, we should help citizens to make, to enable them make their own destiny, not uh, maybe try to force them to a certain destiny something along those lines. So I, I believe that the U.S. is the, um, one of the powerful, more powerful, powerful nations in the world that should enable us to make, make own our own destiny and make our own decision rather than... Uh, unfortunately, we have this tendency of um, politicians trying to prescribe who should be coming into, 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 into leadership in certain countries. I wouldn't like the state to play that role. I would like them to see that they speak out, they support human rights defenders. If ever there are violations, they speak out, they hold the, 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 our country is responsible. For instance, Zimbabwe, they should hold it accountable. It doesn't matter how violence and right. If, if the government of the day violates the state, they should be held accountable and make sure that when we call out for help, they help us to defend those rights and observe our human rights. What gives you hope to keep going in this work? What gives me hope, I think, is that um, when we formed WOSA, when, or when I joined WOSA, it was something that I felt I needed to do as an individual, as a person, to, to try and transform the community. But when we got the when we, WOSA is getting the recognition that is getting in the communities in Zimbabwe, within Zimbabwe and outside Zimbabwe, that gives me hope that we are on the right path. People believe that we Zimbabweans can, we deserve better, and we sh should be the solution to our problems, the participation of the people. And what it always gives me hope is that at times when you, you get arrested or when you are beaten, when you are under a, a lot of repression, you will think that people will run away from you. But the, 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 that's exactly the opposite of what happens. People, my neighbors will say, you are doing a fantastic job, keep to keep up the good work and even other organizations that support what we are doing. So I think that it gives me hope that yes, we are heading somewhere and people are joining in. And what do you believe is the best way to help young people get involved and to work against injustice? The best thing that we can do to the young people is to allow them to be equal human beings. Make, involve them in the decision making, involve them in the struggle. Let's not, let's not, let us not ignore them and say, okay, they are too young or they are not interested. Let us make them interested. First, I'll give an example with Waza. I think Waza we are doing a lot for the young people because we've taken a society where the youth were hopeless and we brought them and we said, okay, 
we are not just going to bring them into our activism, just demonstrating in the street, coming into workshops. We gave them a special role. We've tasked them with the task of being paid into workshops and then they take the knowledge or the training to the communities and they are able to sit in the communities and discuss and then they are able to write the reports that also input into our advocates. So for me, the youth and the young are very important. They play, play a key role in Moza and I salute them for their strength. Before I really started doing this human rights work, I was someone who was, able, you know, you, when you are growing up in a repressive of environment, you, you have this anger bucket inside of you. But now I'm able to say, okay, what is the issue? What is the solution? And when I go out and demonstrate or write a pamphlet saying, denouncing a wrong, I feel relieved. So I'm happy.